Spacelab Ghost Dolby Atmos. The new version 1.5 of Spacelab now directly connects to the Dolby Atmos Composer, opening up yet another sought-after feature for your Dolby Atmos workflow on any DAW. My name is Thomas Fiedler from Fiedler Audio and I will quickly show you the main new features of that update. These are direct connection to the Dolby Atmos Composer, manual delay compensation in Spacelab for connecting with the Dolby Atmos Composer, LFE handling, source automation in Spacelab, mono switch and beam, and opening the beam editor directly from Spacelab. We will create in-depth tutorials about all these new features shortly. If you have not yet done so, please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to not miss anything. Let's dive in. The most important new feature of Spacelab 1.5 is the ability to connect directly to both versions of the Dolby Atmos Composer, circumventing the DAW's routing entirely, just like the Dolby Atmos Beam. If you want to know about the way the Dolby Atmos Beam connects to the Composer, please watch our tutorials for the Composer. We'll leave a link in the description. Let's have a look at this session. We have the Composer and the Master Channel and a few beams on the tracks. Spacelab can be used in two ways, as a normal reverb in send and return operation and as a sophisticated panning and reverb solution. Let's first have a look at the easy way, send and return operation. Let's create a stereo aux channel and instantiate Spacelab there. Since you only need the wet reverb signal, let's switch off dry. Now, switching over to the composer, we see that Spacelab has been recognized automatically and is displayed in the connections list. Now we just have to select the layout to which Spacelab shall render the reverb to. Typically, you would select the composite format you plan to use for your Atmos mix, but you are free to choose anything from the extensive list of speaker layouts Spacelab offers. Let's select 916. As you can see, although Spacelab lives on a stereo aux, you can render to any layout which is sent directly to the composer. That way, you have a full-blown 3D reverb in any DAW for your Dolby Atmos mix with just a few clicks. As we are already done setting everything up, we can now send whatever we want to Spacelab for reverberation. Let's do that with the vocals. We used to be a team, we seemed to dream to many others. You picked your battles wrong, I'm not the one you should be after. Why feel superior to someone who has been there for you? If you think that this is cool, just wait a minute. Now we are having a look at the second way of using Spacelab with the Composer. We actually don't need to change a lot in our setup. We first activate Dry again in Spacelab. Then let's replace the Dolby Atmos beam on the vocal track with a Spacelab beam. As you can see in the Composer, the Atmos beam connection of the vocals disappeared. Dry and wet of the vocals are now supposed to come through the Spacelab connection. For that to work, there is just one more step. In Spacelab we have to connect the source which is in the list on the left to the Spacelab beam we just put on the vocals track. Now when we hit play, we hear the vocals with a reverb. With a dry wet control for that source in Spacelab we can adjust it to our liking. Should be after why feel superior to someone who has been there for you. I've pulled you through a wound with all that I could do, but I'm not here to lick your wounds. The panning of the vocals now have to be done in Space Lab, and the early reflections of the panned vocals are rendered according to their position in space. That is impossible in the send and return operation. Not only this, all the different object rendering features of Spacelab are now rendered and sent to the composer. Now you might ask, what about dynamic objects? Well, no problem at all. You can switch the vocal source to dynamic objects in Spacelab here.
all in the composer here. Then you will have the dry sound of the vocals as dynamic objects while the reverb is rendered to the selected composite layout of Spacelab. Well, that's it for the first and major feature of Spacelab 1.5. We'll go more in depth in an upcoming tutorial. When working on a host which correctly communicates the song position with a plugin, you don't need this feature, as all latency differences are taken care of automatically by the Dolby Atmos Composer. But currently there are three hosts known to have bugs in their communication with plugins, namely Pro Tools, Logic Pro X and Sequoia. For them and possibly other hosts with similar problems, you can input the latency which occurs up to Spacelab in the About screen. That value will be communicated to the composer so that it can take care of properly synchronizing all incoming connections. More details about this in another tutorial. But to get a better understanding right now, you can have a look at the composer tutorial about manual latency compensation in Pro Tools. There's a link in the description. LFEs, or Low Frequency Effect Channels, were ignored by Spacelab prior to version 1.5, since panning and reverb is usually not applied to them. But for completing the workflow, especially in connection with the Dolby Atmos Composer, Spacelab now received a proper LFE handling upgrade. Speaker layout channels, which are supposed to go to an LFE, are now not just skipped anymore, but can be declared as one of the two possible LFE channels. This works for both the output speaker layout and incoming sources. LFEs in sources are routed straight to the corresponding LFE in the output speaker layout if there is one. And to make things even more interesting, you can reverberate LFEs. The reverb signal itself, however, will be only rendered to the non-LFE channels of the output layout. More about this in an upcoming tutorial. This is a pro feature only coming to Spacelab Interstellar. In the About screen of Spacelab, you can set whether you want to record automation of source parameters on the track where Spacelab lives, as it was the only option until now, or if you want to record source automation on the tracks with Spacelab Beam on them. This comes in handy especially if you have already recorded automation and want to move a clip or region together with the associated automation, which now can be done in one single step, accelerating your workflow significantly. More about this in an upcoming tutorial. If you are working in a DAW which does not have real mono tracks like Ableton Live, Bitwig or Reaper, sending audio with Spacelab Beam forced you to always have two objects from that connection, although your audio clip is actually mono. Now you can manually switch a beam to mono. Then it will only send the audio from the left channel to Spacelab. And last but not least, another handy feature of the Dolby Atmos Composer has also found its way into Spacelab. You can now open the editor of a Spacelab beam right from Spacelab, without having to search across the mixer of your session. That of course only works if the editor of that beam is not already open somewhere. We will create in-depth tutorials about all this. Please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. See you on the next one.